Uh, Hana, if you don't mind, uh, could you please introduce yourself just for a few seconds, please? Just briefly yeah. introduce yourself. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Hana. I'm in Tasmania, um, just south of Australia. So I'm teaching at a boys' school with Harry's friend um, Dion, um, so at a boys' Catholic school. But I've been teaching in England and Australia, so I've done a bit across the world, really. <laughs> but I'm the head of maths actually now. Mm -hmm. So I have just gone through your profile. I think you have had a great experience. Almost 20 years experience as a teacher is not an ordinary thing. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I've done a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. So Hari Prasad, sir, uh, if you Hi. have any question, please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, Namaskaram, sir. Uh, Vincent, sir, Namaskaram and yes. good morning. Yeah. So it's a good um, afternoon. Yeah, good, oh, good afternoon. Okay, yeah. sorry, sir. Good afternoon. And my my self introduction is I'm Hari Prasad, working as secondary grade teacher of MPP school Kottamuddepil of Andhra Pradesh State, dealing with one to fifth class sir classes sir with all subjects. Just I want to ask sir, about time concepts sir. And my question is how to easily introduce the concepts of time of primary level. That means one to five grades sir. So. Um, Understanding different time zones across the world, do you mean, or? Uh, Hana, actually, he wants to know about uh, the concept of uh, time uh, for primary school students. I mean, uh, to teach the time lesson uh, for the primary school students. So how do you introduce the time lesson for the primary Easy. school students? So um, now I have to be honest, I have actually never taught primary school, so I've never had to do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I know with my son, so my six year old is trying to learn the time now. So he is trying to understand the concept of hours compared to seconds and minutes. And that's quite hard for him. He um, gets that confused. So I think that's probably the first thing is making sure they understand so timing them doing different activities and understanding that seconds is a short time gap mm -hmm. and then um, appreciating that he is at school for hours um, and then maybe a TV show that he likes goes on for minutes. So I try and just get him the concept of the different, you know, seconds, minutes and hours. So he's getting that concept. Um, but he is only six. <laughs> So yeah. I, you probably mean older students telling the time. Do you want an analog clock or? Yeah, in, in yeah. fact, uh, uh, Hari Prasad sir, actually we to use the old clock actually in order to teach the timing for the students. We use a old yeah, clock sure. uh, with the long yeah. hand and the small hand. Uh, yep. Small hand no. for the second long hand. hand, yeah. Yes. And they, they're no. finding it hard, are they? Is that so? They're finding it difficult to read the time. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, due to uh, instead of that clock, we used uh, digital clocks, analog clock. Yes, well, I've actually, yeah, there's a lot of students even at high school that are so used to digital clock but can't use the analog. Um, yes. Yeah, I'll have to, I might have to ask one of my primary school trained teacher friends and get some good ideas for you. Actually, I can't help you with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Hana, actually, it seems that you have a peacock in your background. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. It's so beautiful. Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of everything here. <laughs> lovely, lovely to watch there. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I think let me check the my participants. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, any, chow, any more questions? I think we have uh, very valuable time here with our guest teacher and uh, uh, we need to utilize this time with as many questions as possible. So, yeah, who is going to ask the next question? Ma'am. Can I ask ma'am? Yes, yes ma'am. Hello. Yeah. Very good evening. Good morning, Anna ma'am. Good Hello, afternoon. how are you? <laughs> fine, fine, very fine. How about you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is Madhavi. Uh, uh, basically, I'm working as a teacher in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, India. So, I would like to ask a question uh, that is a... Uh, so, how, can you describe your teaching style 
and uh, how would you convey uh, some complex information to uh, some group of students um so my teaching style is very practical so i um i would much rather the students learn from actually practicing okay. questions themselves so i try and avoid standing at the front of a class and just talking if i can especially because i teach all boys they're not very good at listening for too long um okay. so i think <laughs> they learn much better by actually doing practical um applications so actually having a go at, so um at the minute i'm doing transformation so reflections of shapes so we actually got chalk went outside and they actually drew and axes and drew the shapes and did all the reflections themselves rather than me just showing them on the board and I just find it just helps them understand that better um, so I did send Harry some uh, links of a lot of practical things we use so our students have um, an iPad each so they each have a device um, so I like to use different websites, so they're constantly just practicing the skills as well. Um, and I do find that helps. I hope that answered your question. Yes, ma'am. And uh, <clears throat> what would you do if a student is uh, struggling to grasp the content in our classroom? Um, I think that's when you need some one-to-one -one time and actually sit down and ask them some questions. And I actually, I did some training <laughs> recently where um, I can't remember the statistic but often we are, as teachers ask a question and we only give them under a second to answer before we jump in so I've personally yes. <laughs> actually been yeah I've been asking a question and really pausing and waiting for them to answer even if they cannot answer the question giving them some time to think about what do they know yes, and actually absolutely. have a go and and I, yeah, I realized I do jump in quicker than I should. So you need to, like, I've, yeah. I've learned that now. So students that haven't got it, I'm asking them a question and pausing and letting them think. And that really has changed actually in my lessons recently. Yes, otherwise we can reteach the concept in other ways. That's it. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> that will happen. Yeah. I'm very glad to hear from you, thank you. Yeah, lovely to speak to you. Padma Priya ma'am. Padma Priya ma'am, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, sir. Yeah, please go ahead and ask them, ma'am. <coughs> we have. Please interact with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you going? I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm a math teacher here in Telangana. Um, I use uh, Desmos, uh, GeoGebra, RoboCompass. These are Brilliant. the two educational tools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to make my under, uh, students visualize math concepts, uh, I would like to know, other than these, what are the tools you are exploring there in your classroom? Um, I, I use Desmos a lot as well, actually. I love Desmos and GeoGebra. Um, I use, I use a few different websites. So I'm just gonna go outside to <laughs> avoid my children. Um, I've used, there's, a, there's a website called Transom that I really like to use um, to get students to just repeat questions. So it's quite repetitive, but it instantly marks it for them. So it just gives um, some instant feedback. So I, well, I have a class of 30 students. So um, they can't always get feedback from me straight away. So transom.org is a really nice one. So every student, and it actually differentiates. So it has four or five levels on each topic. Um, and it's just a great way of kind of differentiating for each individual as well. Um, we also use uh, a website that you do have to pay for called Maths Online. Um, but that's basically instead of a textbook. Um, and I did send some other links with Harry. I'll send uh, others on that I think of as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, how are you handling the strugglers? I mean, we need to differentiate our teaching style. I mean, the concept. So, here in our classrooms, uh, we have uh, more students who have, who fear maths, who are scared of maths. Actually, yep. 
So how yep. you how do you handle such students in your class? Um, yes, we have that a lot. Um, so that's one of my biggest um, aims at the beginning every school year is any students that don't enjoy maths. I always tell them that's probably my biggest thing, especially with the younger years, is that they start yeah. to enjoy. Um, so, you know, once they've got that enjoyment and they're more willing to try things then. And so a lot of the time it's about just building their confidence, trying something. Um, we have a lot of issues with mental maths as well. A lot of stuff with their time tables. Um, and then that slows other processes down. So that's another thing that we're working on at the minute. Um, but yeah, that's my personal goal every year with my classes is to just give them yeah. something that they're going to enjoy. And then I find they're just so much more engaged, definitely. So what are the strategies uh, you adopt to engage them? Um, so I, it's a lot of hands-on games. Um, mm -hmm. Have you heard of a website called Kahoot? Have you heard of that? Pardon? Kahoot is, um, it's uh -huh. basically- Kahoot, yeah. yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I, we, we know I about quite a lot. Um, just at the end of a lesson um, so it just gives them the competitive edge especially teaching boys <laughs> they like that um, and it's just I think mixing it up so you're not always just doing one style of lesson mixing things up just to keep it a little bit different each time really <laughs> so what is the strength in your class how many students uh, we have about 30 in our classes uh, and they are all completely mixed. So um, we'll have quite a variety of levels in one class. Okay. Thank you. Glad to talk to you. Yeah, lovely to speak to you. Okay. Any more questions from our participants? So as and, you uh, one more thing I would like to add. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. seeing yeah. a peak behind you when you were talking. Uh, it's I so did. He's just flown day. away. <laughs> yeah, we had twenty-three yeah, yeah. peacocks for one at one time. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah, is this yeah. your son? Yes, this is Teddy. Yeah, you? <laughs> oh, hi, Hindi. <laughs> hi, dear. <laughs> They're in India. So do you enjoy playing with peacocks? No, they don't. Yeah, we're not much a fan of them, really. <laughs> Pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, any more questions from our participants? Every second is counts here. It's very valuable. So, Sri Vijay ma'am, Sudharani ma'am. So, uh, meantime, I would like to ask Hanna one question. Uh, so, yeah, Max, Max, in fact, has been a, a trouble for me. And uh, since from my childhood, I, I actually, I was very poor performer when it comes to mathematics. <laughs> so, whenever there was a mathematics class, I tried to skip the class. I tried to block <laughs> the class. So, what kind of strategies you would like to adopt when it comes to the slow learners like me in mathematics? Um, I honestly think it's a, as much about the relationship you have with the students as it does about the maths. Mm. Um, we do have students that are very good at avoiding doing their maths work. Um, and I think if you build up a, some trust and a good relationship with the students, they're more likely to come along. And it's also um, just giving them tasks that are appropriate for their level. I think a lot of the time, the reason students are avoiding it is because they're trying to do work that's just too difficult for them. They haven't learned those skills. Yeah. Um, and so that's where differentiating really is so important, making sure, you know, you're kind of targeting the students at the right level. Um, I think there's, there's massive fear for a lot of students with maths. Uh, it's a funny one. And I think um, a lot of it starts in primary school, especially if you have a teacher that isn't maths trained and they're not a fan of maths it, you're kind of um fighting a losing battle right from the start unfortunately <laughs> yeah. so what are the topics uh, you have uh, in your max book i mean for ninth graders and eighth graders so what are the common topics uh, that uh, you can find out uh, in the test book um so i think solving equations is a big one that we do early on because it's it comes up in so many other skills mm -hmm. so they need to be able solve equations before they try and do Pythagoras' theorem and, you know, those kind of skills. Mm. Um, 
we do some finance so we try and teach them about interest rates um topics like that um it's probably about 30 percent of it is algebra kind of heavy on the algebra skills um our year sevens and eights it's very much into fractions and decimals and mental maths a lot more skills without calculators um and then the grade nines and tens are kind of getting heavier into the algebra building up to being able to cope with calculus is really the the skill that we're all building up towards hopefully <laughs> yeah so what about the interest of the students do the students show the interest uh, towards mathematics and uh, so uh, in order to attract those students uh, i mean uh, to attract the students uh, towards the mathematics so do you have any other fun games uh, in the classrooms to implement uh, yeah always so i quite often use a dice you know large dice to do different games for them or i'll try and find some um good ones that i've got actually and i'll send them on because yeah. i've got yeah i've got some great games and um just little matching activities so kind of at the end of a lesson they've got to cut out and do like dominoes to match yeah. the activity and just little hands-on things like that are really great actually they do work well and they, the students don't even realize they're doing maths sometimes <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> So, any more questions from our participants, please? Uh -huh. Can I ask one more question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, 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 Miss Hanna, uh, when a teacher calls you sick and you are required to teach their class, how, what do you teach? Um, that's a tough so what one. Are the, what is the favorite concept <laughs> so... that you, you choose to select at, at the first attempt? um so i only teach in high school so it's always a specific subject um so i okay. i don't ever do primary school um so it's a bit different the teacher would set work for the students and they're okay. probably generally they're old enough to get on with it themselves um i have done some relief teaching in primary schools before <laughs> and that was tough <laughs> i'm not i'm not prepared for those kind of age groups i'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> <Do it. laughs> mostly uh, come to me i i prefer to teach uh, i uh, some oral uh, general questions on mathematics and teach tables <laughs> yes so i will recall the tables uh, knowledge from the students <laughs> just like that <laughs> how do you what do you prefer to teach <laughs> that way. i feel uh, yeah i think it's good to have a few hand um worksheets on hand to do some nice coloring in of yes. times take things stuff like that <laughs> i do think to be honest the mental maths so just quick okay. with those time tables and things like that is a great one and there's you know most yes, students like a bit of a competition um yes, yes. i think that often works uh, any more any more oh, questions nice <laughs> thank you ma'am pleasure <laughs> Oh, no, actually, I have a question. One more time. One more question. Is, yeah. Right? So in uh, Australia, I think what sort of competitive examinations uh, are there for the students to take? And if there are any competitive examinations, uh, what are the topics, common topics that are featured mainly in these uh, competitive examinations? Is it, does the examination have the good weightage for mathematics? Or uh, could you please say something about that? Yeah, so um, up until grade 10, there's no external examinations. It's all school-based. So we will do an exam just for our grade 10 students in the middle of the year and the end of the year. Um, but in um, Australia, once you get to year 11 and 12, so 17 and 18 year olds, um, they sit external exams. So there's, um, everyone has to do at least one year of maths. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different levels. So there's one that is very low level, just kind of workplace built basic skills, um, going all the way up to kind of your calculus, algebra heavy um, content. So that has external exams. So it's Tasmanian wide would all sit the same exam. Um, and each state in Australia does slightly different exams, but very similar content. That's the beauty of maths. <laughs> yeah. So I, it seems that our participants have no questions in fact, but I, I would like to ask you one more question. 
so uh, could you please explain to us briefly about the Australian education system? Do you have this common education system in each and every province of Australia or uh, is it common or does it differ from region to region? Um, so maths wise, we have an Australian or actually every content has Australian curriculum. So every school has to teach to a certain level for each year group. Um, so that's quite specific, each content for every year group. So you can find that if you're interested um, if you just Google Australian curriculum, it actually has everything there from um, grade one all the way up to grade 12. So it will cover everything. Um, so it is quite specific, but then each state um, has their own requirements as well. Um, and I think for other subjects, it's a bit different, but maths is the same everywhere, really. <laughs> yeah. So any more questions from our participants? I would like to end up this session with one more question. Yeah. Yes. I have, I have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, Hana, ma'am, uh, what are the projects you allot in algebra for uh, high school students? Um, I've got lots. I can send some through. I am. Um, I'm just at the minute doing, uh, getting the students to create um, because we're doing linear relationships, so straight line graphs. I'm actually getting them mm -hmm. to come up with some real life scenarios that are going to give linear relationships. So again, trying to give them some real life context so that they'll actually remember rather than just throwing an algebraic expression yeah. at them. Um, so, uh, but there's lots. I could, I'll, um, I'll have a look through and send one that are useful. <laughs> okay. So how much uh, time do you actually prepare for teaching the lesson, a 40 minute lesson? Um, I've been teaching for nearly 20 years now, so I've got lots of resources. So I do find my planning probably doesn't take too long now. I actually, um, my, my school, I've started using Google Classroom, um, which I found amazing because I now have all of my resources ordered exactly how I'll teach them throughout the year. And I can then just copy and paste that over to my next year group and it's all there again. So that's been really useful for me, actually. Um, so Google Classroom has been a great change. So that actually happened because of COVID. We um, introduced that whilst we were doing online learning and we've actually just kept it. So there has been some blessings. <laughs> <laughs> so are your children able to access uh, the classroom, the Google yes. Classroom? Yes. All so I, uh, yeah, so it's really good, actually. So you don't have to set the same task for every student. So um, the whole class is on one page, but every student, I just tick which students I want to see which task. So there'll be some that are too easy for some students, so they never see that task. Um, um, yeah, so you just kind of adapt and tick the boxes that you want students to see. So that's been great, actually. It's been really useful. How do you handle if some student misses, uh, miss to do a, some sort of assignment you allotted? classroom um well so because it's all online they've kind of got no excuse actually they um can keep up with the work and <clears throat> i make sure in every task that i set on google classroom <coughs> sorry i add a video as well so um there's videos from have you heard of eddie Wu, an australian guy that does lots of videos have you heard uh -huh. of eddie Wu? oh he's fantastic no. He's um, probably my favourite mathematical teacher. He's in Sydney, Australia, um, but he has added his videos of all of his lessons. So um, if there's ever a student that's missed a class, I can send him videos and he can um, just follow that through, listen to the video um, and then ask questions for me afterwards. Okay. So what are the opportunities for the teachers in Australia for professional development? Uh, yes, so we have to do professional development. Um, we um, have a lot of training within our college for <coughs> behavioural and teaching training. But then, um, so as head of maths, I have to go to quite a number of network meetings. Um, <coughs> sorry, I've just got to get somewhere. So I'm just hopping in my car. <laughs> sorry um yeah so we we do get quite a lot of training um 
obviously now I'm 20 years in, <laughs> it's still nice learning new things. Yeah. So I have been in this profession uh, for the past 25 years. <laughs> Oh, well, they go. Teaching math. <laughs> yeah, teaching math to high school students. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, so I... Here, uh, uh, we have uh, the opportunity to, uh, I mean, apply for a fellowship. I have been to US and uh, Hare Krishna is, uh, Mr. Hare Krishna is going to US in the next year, oh, well. in the next Jan, <laughs> for the professional uh, development fellowship. Amazing. Uh, so do you have such programs for Australian teachers? Um, <coughs> yes, it's probably um, in Tasmania. There's actually um, the conference is happening next week, actually. So a, a lot of maths teachers will get together and have different workshops, um, which is a really nice uh, time just to learn a few new skills and activities, which is great. Yeah. So it does happen a lot here. Yeah. Okay. We have an OS aid program. Uh, I mean, it's an exchange program between the teachers uh, of India and the teachers uh, from Australia. Have you heard about oh, okay. it? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> so, but actually, it is for uh, central school, central school teachers, uh, central okay. government run school teachers. So, we don't have that. Uh, we are from state government. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, nice talking to you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I do have to head off. Apologies. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Hanat. Thank you so much you. for right. your valuable time. And uh, you. yeah, we have learned a lot of information. And it's time you take a sip of water. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> Lovely to speak to you. Uh, very nice talking to you, Hanat. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much, Panda ma'am, and everybody. Bye. For being thank, with you us. So, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, yeah thank you, you for organizing it. Thank you. It's a pleasure, ma'am. See you soon.